Hey, hey, new coaches. So today I wanted to pop on and talk to you about what we call power hours and what we use a business activity tracker for. So you may have noticed in the units of this page, you're gonna see a couple different examples of business activity trackers or power hour trackers. So essentially a power hour is something that we use to, to do business building vital behaviors to really grow thriving businesses. So it is so important that you not only learn how to do this, but that you consistently get in the habit of making time in your day to do these behaviors. Now, depending if you are, say, a stay-at-home mom and you have an hour to sit down and do this, you can do it like that. But if you're working full-time, you can break it up into you know, 20-minute increments. You could do it on your lunch break. You could do it after the kids go to bed. You're going to have to find a system to be consistent that works for you. But just know that if you show up and you start doing these simple things every single day, on repeat, that compound effect is gonna kick in and you're gonna start to see a momentum in your business, you're gonna start making an impact, helping people, hitting success club, which is a key to growing your business, start sharing the coaching opportunity and you're gonna start seeing your income grow, which is what we want for you because you're here to build a business and impact lives, right? So I printed out the Team Beachbody business activity tracker and I'm gonna go through the different actions with you to break down what exactly they are, how to do them, um, so that you can really dive in and get started in building your business. So first and foremost, I want you to go into the units and I want you to print out a business activity tracker that you are going to choose to use. And you might try one to see how it works. If you don't love it, try a different one, but find the one that works for you. I personally like this one. It's super simple. It's easy for me to go through every day, check everything off. Um, and the other side of this is that you're going to want to track what you're doing. You're going to want to track the new conversations you're starting, the invites you're sending, the follow-ups you're doing. These are all really key because you need to be tracking to be able to improve. What you track, you can improve. If you're not tracking it, you're not going to be able to correlate the results you're getting and know what you need to do more of to see the results you want to see, right? So I personally, um, I literally built my business to full time with notebooks, <laughs> tracking my um, new connections, my invites, my follow-ups in notebooks. I still write in notebooks. I also use Streak, Google Streak to track um, as well. But I personally like doing in notebooks. That way I can go back and highlight and write down the dates of when I've talked to people and when to follow up, so on and so forth. So let's dive in. Um, the four vital behaviors. One is be proof that the products work. Two is connect, invite, and follow up. Three is get people results, and four is personal development. So I'm going to go through and break down each one of these for you. So number one, this has to be non-negotiable because you are a coach now, right? So you have to be proof the products work, meaning you are committed to a fitness program, you are drinking Shakeology, you're perhaps also drinking Performance Line or Collagen or eating Beach Bars. Um, we have to be proof that this lifestyle actually works, right? So you need to be showing that you're having physical changes, emotional changes, mental changes, that you're seeing financial changes as you grow your business to be able to be proof to others that this actually works and that they could do this too. That is so important for you to be consistent with your own journey and sharing that journey on social media. So obviously the first two things you're going to check off are doing your workout and drinking your Shakeology. So boom, that's your non-negotiable first thing every single day. Whenever you get that in, um, that's a pretty easy one, right? But in that process, you're really gonna grow because in learning how to be someone who's consistent, you have to overcome your own excuses and obstacles and limits and struggles um, to really see that change. But that changes you as a person and also gives you that ability to really help people going through that process too. So, so, so important. That's number one, prove the products work. Number two, this is actually what I would call your business building activities. So this is connecting, inviting, and following up with people. So the first thing on here, if you're following along with me, um, is initiating new connections and adding followers. So if you are working on Facebook, you can use the people you may know tool. You can um, add friends of friends, just make sure they're not friends with other coaches. Um, you can add to your network, we're sending friend requests, you can add to your network from like groups, like common interest groups, like maybe mom groups you're in, or um, groups you're in for sport, like sports teams or, or things that your kids are involved in, you can add friends that way. The goal is just to 
add new friends and grow your network so that you have more eyes and more people seeing what you're doing, what you're sharing, what you're up to, to be able to eventually build a relationship um, and invite them to join this journey with you. If you're working on Instagram, it's great to search through hashtags. For example, I'm a single parent, so I search a lot of single mom hashtags, a lot of single parenting hashtags, a lot of divorced family type hashtags um, to find people that might be in my niche. So say you're a nurse, you might be searching hashtags that have to do with nursing. If you're, if you're a diabetic, you might be searching hashtags that have to do with diabetes. But you're looking to search hashtags to find people that are like you to add to your network. So when you are on Instagram, you're going to follow that person. You're going to like five of their photos and you're going to comment on at least one of them. And I suggest doing at least five of those a day to hopefully have those people follow you back um, and become a part of your network. So that is pretty simple, adding new friends, adding new followers. Um, the next thing is doing a social media post that showcases the benefits or your healthy lifestyle or has a call to action. So um, super basics for when you're a new coach, you don't wanna post only about Beachbody because that's not all you're about, right? You might be a busy mom, you might be working a corporate job. Think about five things that make you you, that are all about you, um, including your fitness journey with Beachbody. And those are things you're gonna wanna start sharing about. But your goal is to make at least one social media post every single day, um, sharing something about you, something about your journey, something about your fitness, your nutrition, um, your confidence, a book you're reading, you know, what you're doing connecting with your team, what you're up to with your kids or your family. Um, you'll notice that there's another tracker. I don't think I can find it at the moment. Oh, yep, I got it right here. Um, that actually, if you're using this tracker here, if you look underneath this little box here under your invites, it gives you sample ideas of what you could be posting every day. So say Thursday, talk about coaching. Friday, talk about fitness. Saturday, talk about family. Sunday, talk about um, an invite, something you're inviting people to join you, whether it's a challenge group or a sneak peek, like coaching opportunity sneak peek. Um, Monday, something about lifestyle. Tuesday, a story, sharing a story about you to help your followers connect to you. Wednesday, community. So if you're someone that needs that prompting of what you should be sharing, this would be a really great tracker for you. And it has all the other vitals that we're going over on this one too. So like I said, they all kind of go together but offer a little something different. So pick the one that works for you. The next thing is updating your Instagram story every single day. So if you are working on Facebook or you're working on Facebook and Instagram, I personally share my stories to Instagram. I save them and then I go upload them to Facebook so that I am visible in both places. But this gives you quick little prompts to, to know what to share behind the scenes in your stories so people can get an idea of what you're up to. Because if you're not sharing People have no idea you're on a fitness journey. They have no idea that you're working on health goals. They have no idea that you could actually be the person to help them with theirs. So this is key, both posting and sharing behind the scenes. So it prompts you to share something about your daily life. I often share my morning routine and you know a little something about driving my son to school in the mornings or what we're doing in the afternoons. Um, workout clips of your actual workout. So this will help you be consistent because it's like extra accountability, but it's also showing that you are showing up every single day and being a product of the product. Um, a product use, so you could share drinking your Shakeology. We do um, rise and jize, energize tags, and we all tag each other as coaches. Um, so you could share eating a beach bar. You could share whatever product you want. You don't have to mention the name but it kind of leaves it up to curiosity, but showing that you're being consistent with that as well. Um, sharing a healthy meal or meal prep because people struggle with nutrition and they like to see what you're eating while you're on your journey. So you can just snap a picture of your dinner or your breakfast and throw it up in your stories. Um, an invitation, promotion of a group, a poll or a call to action. So you are wanting to give people a way to engage with you, especially if they're curious about what you're doing and wanting to join you. And this can be done in so many different ways. It could be as simple as sharing a couple clips of your workout and saying, hey, are you working on fitness goals too? And putting a poll that says yes or no, I'd really like help with that. You can specifically invite to a challenge group or to coaching and put up a poll or say drop your email if you want some more info. Um, but it gives people a call to action to interact with you and actually like engage if that's something they're interested in, right? 
And then a recognition or a shout out. So this might be shouting out a challenger of yours that's getting great results. It might be shouting out someone on the team who's doing really well. So if you're a brand new coach, you might not have a lot of people to recognize yet. But if you see someone in the team page has welcomed a new coach to the team, or they've hit a new rank, or they've done something really awesome, or they've had a killer transformation, you can pop that in your stories and share it too, because the success of our team is the success of all of us, and we can all share each other's. The next thing is responding to all new likes, comments, and views. So this is a great way to start new conversations and new interactions, because like I said, you have to be talking to people to eventually build that trust and be at a place where you can start a new conversation with somebody or invite them to join what you're doing. So I personally respond to all likes on all of my Instagram and Facebook posts. Um, I go through my stories and see who's watching and I start conversations through there like, hey girl, thanks for following me. Um, thanks for the support, I really appreciate it. Do you have any interest in learning anything about my online wellness accountability groups or my coaching team? If not, that's okay too, thanks for the support. And just send a quick message, something like that, connecting with people. Or if you shared something specific like a recipe, you can reach out and say, hey, are you gonna try that recipe I shared? So just looking for ways to engage with people. Um, the next one is inviting to a challenge group or to learn about the coaching opportunity. And guys, if you don't invite, your business will not grow. I promise you that. You cannot sit back and hope that people are gonna come to you and know what you're doing. You have to go out there and be brave and invite people. And I always like to say, that if it makes you scared or if you feel fearful about inviting you, that think about if your coach hadn't invited you, how different would your life be? I always say the best thing that my coach ever did for me was recruit me because asking me for four months when I kept saying no and she finally you know, invited me to a challenge group and I said, you know what, what do I have to lose? That was six years ago and it completely changed my life. It changed my health, my emotional state, um, you know, I've built an entire business, been able to be home and free with my son. Like it literally changed my entire life. And imagine if she had never had the courage to invite me. So think about that, that it is selfish if we don't invite people when we have something so incredible to offer that could change their health, their fitness, their finances, their confidence, their relationships. It changes every facet of our lives, and that is such a gift we have to give. So you have to have the courage to invite people. And also, if you're here to grow a business, you're not going to grow a business if you're not inviting people. It's key to consistently be helping people and inviting people to join you on this coaching journey if you want to grow a business. So you always need to know what you are inviting to. Are you inviting to a challenge group? Is there an upcoming business opportunity webinar to invite to? Um, reach out to your coach if you're like, I don't know what I should be inviting to. Can I invite to your group? Um, I'm always more than happy to have my new coaches invite to my challenge groups until they learn how to run their own. But you always need to know what you are specifically inviting to because otherwise you're going to sit down and think, I don't know who to invite and I don't know what to invite them to. But say we have a new group kicking off um, on February, whatever, and I can say, hey, um, I have this really awesome transformation boot camp starting on such and such a date. We're focusing on simple fitness, simple nutrition, um, motivation, self love, confidence, consistency, and just really elevating our habits so that we can be the happiest, healthiest versions of ourselves. Is that something you'd be interested in learning more about? Um, there are a million different ways to invite. You can check out the Power Hour scripts that I'm sharing as well to give you different sample ideas of actually what to say when you're inviting people, when you're following up, when you're starting conversations, all that good stuff. But the important thing is that you start taking action and inviting people to join you. And as when you're a brand new coach, this is actually so easy to do because if you're sharing your fitness journey and your nutrition journey and what your goals are, or you just recently had a great transformation and you share that, it's so easy to reach out to the people that have liked it or commented on it and say, hey, Thank you so much for the support on my journey. I really appreciate it. I'm having so much fun in my wellness accountability groups and I've just made such incredible friendships with the support of women in this community. And it's been so helpful for me to have a simple plan to work on my fitness and nutrition with no guesswork if, if it works to help me see my goals. Um, if you're interested, I'd love to tell you more about my next accountability group. Are you, are you curious? 
Um, so it's so simple. Like don't overthink invites. Don't overthink anything in this business. Like hesitation breeds fear and action cures fear. So your goal is to get out there and take action and you're going to learn as you go. Don't be a collector of information and sit back and think that you have to know how to do everything perfectly before you take action. I want you to get out there and go do this and take action right now, today. <laughs> um, the last thing is following up with people you've invited. And we're going to dive more into this a little bit later in the training, talking about overcoming objections and such. But here's a rule of thumb in network marketing is that you have to invite people sometimes five to seven times before they say yes to you. It might be that they don't trust you yet. It might be that they're facing their own fears and they're just not ready for change yet. It might be that they're just busy and they didn't see your original message. Um, it might be where you've sent them some information about your boot camp or a video about Shakeology or a video about a new program we have coming out and why you're excited to do it, and then they don't respond to you. So it is your job to always be going back to conversations of, hey, I just wondered if you had any more questions, um, if I can help you have any more clarity, if this is, is something that you might consider joining, or hey, I have two more spots left in my group. I know we had talked about you wanting to lose 20 pounds and get control of your sugar cravings. I'd love to have you join us. Is that something you're still interested in? Follow-ups are super simple, but they are absolutely key to being able to help people and growing your business because I personally, six years into my business, hit Success Club and help people consistently every month, mainly based off of follow-ups. And it's less about the actual initial invites. It's more about follow-up. So follow-ups are absolutely key to growing your business. I call it being passionately persistent. You shouldn't be afraid to ignore people. Um, or that you shouldn't be afraid. To, <laughs> I don't know why I said ignore. You shouldn't be afraid to annoy people. Because if you're not being icky and weird and salesy, people genuinely appreciate that you care enough to go back and go back to that conversation and say, hey, I remembered we had talked about your goals. I just wanted to see if you still were interested because it reminds people that you didn't just go quick, invite them trying to make 25 bucks. You actually genuinely care about helping them see results enough that you're gonna go back to that conversation and follow up with them. So be passionately persistent um, because you wanna help people change their lives and follow-ups are, are key to that. Now, next is we are in section number three now about getting people results. So this first one is contributing to your challenge group. So if you are not running your own challenge group, you still need to be your own best customer. Log in your challenge group, log your Shakeology, post your sweaty selfie, add something of value. If it's a motivational quote or a tip of how you make healthy snacks in the afternoons, um, how you don't hit the snooze button and get your workout in the morning. There are so many little things you can do to add value to the people that you are helping and or in your challenge groups. And if you're running a challenge group, it is so important for you to go through and check in on your customers every single day, comment on their sweaty selfies. We are basically cheerleaders. We're cheering people on their journeys, helping them navigate the struggles, helping them stay on track, right? And holding them accountable to seeing the results that they join to see. So getting into your challenge groups and being present in there is so important. The next one is recognize achievement. And like I said, if you're a new coach, you might not have a lot of that to celebrate yet, but down the road, that's going to mean shouting out your challengers that are having success, shouting out coaches on your team that are seeing success, and really just celebrating the successes and the wins that we're seeing collectively as a team. And the last one is personal development. And I put a little section in the units of this with some personal development um, suggestions for you guys. Personal development is life. I am like a personal growth, personal development junkie. And it's really funny because when I was a new coach, I was like, I don't need these woo woo books to tell me how to change my life or be more positive. And then I read a couple books and it changed everything for me because there are so many things that we struggle with, with being inconsistent or fears or worries about rejection or doubt or things we're going through in our personal lives. And when you really lean into making personal development a, an everyday habit you have of reading a book for 10 minutes before bed or listening to an audio while you're driving in the car, listening to a podcast, um, getting on team calls, getting on national wake up calls on Monday mornings, you change. Like you, the way you start to think change, the way you start to act changes, 
you'll become more consistent, you'll become more motivated, more inspired, and it really becomes that fuel, if you will, that gets you up every day and keeps you going, right? So personal development is so important. Whether you're a brand new coach or you've been around like a dinosaur for six years like me, um, engaging in your own personal and business growth and development every single day is so important. It is absolutely key to our business. Um, one of the best pieces of advice I was ever given by a mentor of mine was that your business will never grow more than you grow as a person because the more you grow and the more you change and the more you elevate, the more you have to offer and the bigger that you're going to, the bigger goals that you're going to have the guts to go for. So investing in you every single day is key. And at the bottom of this, you can actually track your numbers of how many new followers you have, how many new challengers, um, if you helped anyone, your success club points and how many new coaches. And at the top of this page, I forgot to mention, it has you write down your why and your target market to kind of help you stay focused because when you sit down to do these things, they might feel monotonous. You're doing the same thing over and over again every day. The only thing is different is you're talking to different people. But here's the thing. You have to stay connected to your long-term vision and your why for why you are building this business. It, it, is it to pay off debt? Is it to have more financial freedom? Is it to buy your dream home? Is it to be more present with your kids and more present in your life with your family? Is it, you know, there's a million reasons why coaches build their business, but you have to be connected to that deeper emotional why and that vision for your life and what you are building because this, this is how you're going to get there. Whether your goal is to be a hobby coach and make an extra $500 a month, or your goal is to grow a six figure income business um, or build a full time business as I have, these vital behaviors are what's gonna make that possible. And so you have to keep that long term marathon, not a sprint mindset when you are doing this that these small daily actions done consistently every single day over time will compound to incredible results and building a really successful business. So get these printed, get excited. If you have any questions, please let me know. We're always happy to help, but I hope that gives you a little bit of an insight as to what all of these things mean, how to actually do them, how simple it can be, and how important it is to be consistent with them as you're building your business. So let's see you next time.